What's going on everybody? In this video, we are gonna be covering the general kind of loosening the candidate up questions that you're likely to get asked. So this could be for all kinds of DevOps roles, SRE, Linux engineer, infrastructure engineer, automation engineer, DevOps engineer, all those things. Um, and this kind of stuff is useful for pure software developers and other tech roles too. You're gonna to see in the very kind of first assessment portion of a DevOps interview, the answers the interviewer is generally expecting you to come up with and kind of the reason why that is. Which Linux distribution do you prefer and why? And the kind of reason for asking this question is just to see like, do they think Ubuntu is Linux? Like if there's nothing else, um, do they understand that different distributions are built for different reasons? Uh, you might use Alpine in a very different situation than you would use Arch. You would use Arch in a very different situation than you might use Debian or Ubuntu. Um, because your CTO told you to. Uh, do, do they kind of have an opinion on this, right? It's like the mark of someone that actually understands something, someone that has a few more opinions than a lay person. And uh, that's important. I think one, you don't wanna to go too overboard, uh, especially in a negative way. Uh, I think it's fine to go overboard in a positive way, like talking about how many distros you love and for what different purposes and uh, even different Unix like operating systems, like oh, Solaris is awesome, SmarterOS was so cool, FreeBSD is amazing. That tends to make a really good impression. And it also, like you're communicating like, hey, I, I know that there's like a landscape of things out here. I know that these things are tools and technologies and they are suited to different purposes a lot of the time. Uh, and I'm not like ultra religious about any one of them and think it's the answer to everything. Another important general question is, um, do you have automation, programming, or software development experience? A huge portion of a DevOps uh, gig of any kind is gonna usually be programming, automation, um, and, and reading a lot of legacy automation, infrastructure, scripts, code, configuration code, that kind of thing. So being familiar with um, a, at least one programming language uh, and having, ha having kind of gone through the process of writing code before uh, is good. And there will be specific sections or questions on that usually later, specifically around please do this programming problem. And um, like, how do you use Git? Like what commands do you run, et cetera. Uh, another fun one <laughs> that I've actually made a video about, uh, what's your preferred editor or what's your preferred work environment or what's your preferred, um, you know, kind of like software environment, uh, things like languages. Um, and you, you can go deep here depending on, depending on what they're asking, right? It's like, you can go all the way in, you know, from editors, terminal emulators, automation tools, config tools, you know, let them stop you. It's better to seem a little more excited than, than not excited enough. It's like, oh, you know, nano, I don't know. I have a pretty good nano RC. This is an interesting one. It might get asked in a lot of different uh, ways, but would you consider yourself to be more of a sysadmin or more of a developer? Most of us tend towards one end of the spectrum. You know, most of us are more interested in the infrastructure, the kind of underlying hardware, the networking, um, the operating system, services, HTTP, that kind of stuff. And some of us are more interested in the automation, programming, kind of software end of things. Um, you're always gonna fall, you know, very few people are exactly in the middle. Um, and that changes throughout your career, right? So it's like, I, I have answered many times before that like, oh, I used to be like, you know, when I was a teenager, I was super into Linux. Then I discovered programming and I shifted way over to the other side. Um, and as I've bounced around to different positions in my career from like web dev to, uh, you know, straight up like racking pizza boxes in the data center sysadmin, um, that's changed. My interest has changed. My day-to-day -day work has changed. Um, if you ask me right now, I would say I'm probably a seven on the, uh, if, if, a, if a 10 is full programming, I'm, I'm like a seven. I'm more interested in, in work that involves code or automation or, or actually writing uh, tools that do things for me because I'm lazy and forgetful. Another very general one will be which configuration management or automation tools have you worked with? Uh, this is getting to be a pretty broad question because there's so many types of automation and uh, config management tools, but it's just another way for you to shine by seeing that distinction and pointing it out. Um, so configuration management, they're probably expecting to hear something like I've used Puppet, I've used Chef, I've used Ansible or SaltStack and be ready to answer more detailed questions about that. 
what'd you like about it? What'd you hate about it? It's like, there is no config management tool right now where someone could be like, oh yeah, I've used it extensively. Didn't have any problems with it. No one will believe you because they all have, you know, pretty serious problems that you run into uh, even at a very small scale when you're using them. So be prepared to have an answer about that and an opinion on that. If they say something broader, like autom which automation tools have you used, you can find the distinction of, okay, look, there's config management, there is like infrastructure automation and state management, something like Terraform, or cloud formation, whatever. There is um, a build or CI tools, so things like Jenkins, uh, uh, Packer, um, run deck, this is like an even wishy-washier category, I think. There's so many different tools that are good at different things there, and you might use several of them, like circle, etc. Um, and you don't, ha the requirement is not to know all of them, it's to know of some of them and probably have experience with one. Um, and even if you only have light experience with one, it's fine, just be honest about it. Another thing you'll often find in the kind of general section where they're just trying to loosen you up and ask you some easy stuff and kind of let you shine a little bit, uh, something you'll often get is like, do you have any nerdy hobbies that you keep up with at home? Do you, uh, are you, you know, are you into fun techie things? Like, do you have any projects you're working on? Do you have a Raspberry Pi and you're doing like home automation with it? Um, this is, again, your chance to have an answer ready, something that is you know, your 30 second elevator pitch of like, here are the cool tech things I'm doing at home or a project I'm working on on the side. If you have a GitHub account you can point to here, so much the better. So that's kind of the, the, the end of the intro. These are the types of questions you'll get. Remember, this is what you're opting into. So if you get yourself in trouble here, you overestimate your skills, whatever, um, you'll pay for it later because everything you say you're good at here is, uh, hey bud. How you doing? Everything you say you're good at here is fair game in the rest of the interview. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace. I'm gonna go play with my dog.